everybody. Today's episode of Injury Prevention for Runners. Uh, I'm with Nick Stump of Fleet Feet. We're going to really dive into uh, footwear, inserts, injury prevention that we're seeing with the foot and ankle and the knee. Uh, we're going to really try to get you to understand what's changing in the shoe basics for runners. It's really a, an evolving thing. I've been doing this for 11 years and it's always been a big part of my recommendations for my patients and it's always hard for me to keep up so I rely on the experts to to kind of educate me on it and uh, Nick and I were having a little bit of a conversation beforehand about some of the changes and it's really something that you need to take into consideration okay uh, some of the importance that we're going to dive into at the end I'm going to talk about knee pain it, there's a lot of things that runners deal with when they have proper or improper foot and ankle function uh, but knee pain is one of the biggest ones a lot of times we uh, try to explain to our patients and our runners that the knee pain, if it's an overuse injury, is usually a reaction site. It's usually coming from a problem in the hip or the foot and ankle. Last week's episode, we discussed the hip a lot. Today, we're gonna dis really discuss the foot and ankle, and a key component of that is the footwear. Now, if you're dealing with some really you know dysfunctional things that are medical related and you have a diagnosis and it's something that's really causing a lot of pain, you may need to see a physician for that to get proper evaluation and diagnosis because as Nick will tell you, the shoe's not gonna fix everything. You know, If you've got a severe chronic issue there, um, it's not gonna be the cure-all, just like sometimes conservative treatment isn't. So take that into consideration as you listen to us today. And so without further ado, Nick Stump is going to really dive into some of the shoes and we'll go from there. Welcome. Thanks, Kevin, and thanks everyone for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and just be able to kind of give our side of things and kind of how the footwear game has, uh, where it's come from, where it's kind of going, and, and how that can benefit you today. I truly believe today that we are in that golden era of uh, shoe development. So, so many things are going into shoes, into footwear, uh, whether you're a runner, walker, triathlete, fitness enthusiast, whatever it is, footwear really does kind of come down to being one of those foundations of your uh, outfit let alone your performance so really kind of what we do is is that you know looking at it from a knee perspective or even overall perspective we always want to try and be doing a lot of interviewing questions kind of seeing where some things go uh, and usually we deal with uh, people come and say like oh I'm a neutral or I'm a stability wearer and that's great and that's a lot of great information to kind of get, get started with but things are really beginning to kind of change nowadays. Uh, so overpronation, underpronation are usually very key words that we hear a lot. Uh, but in reality, a lot of people don't understand what exactly pronation is. So pronation is just that natural inward roll of the foot. So whenever you kind of take a foot and any time it begins to kind of bend and dislocate and kind of absorb that shock, that's that pronation. So when we mean by over or under pronation is that one is over pronation as you become fully weight bearing that really becomes very flexible, tends to be spend too much time in that pronated stage, underpronated, tends to stay a little bit too rigid, doesn't begin to move much at all, there's no shock absorption, or tends to stay in that supinated position, which is that outward roll of the foot. So that's kind of where we kind of take some things into consideration with it. So like as Kevin was saying, that really knees, when people come with a lot of knee pain, which is what we see primarily, uh, we tend to say like, well, it might be coming from the foot and the ankle primarily, so we look at a lot of shoe shapes, foot shapes, foot measurements, and kind of go from there, because it is a reaction, it's a joint, right? So it usually will be coming from somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely, you know, we see everything from plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, knee, back pain, all stemming from that, and one of the biggest mistakes I see, one of the first questions I ask, and unfortunately get uh, the wrong answer too often, is that I ask them where they get their running shoes, and a lot of times they're just ordering them off the internet, and not really talking to anybody about it, they're not getting, um, fitted by anybody, they're just buying it, and sometimes even they're buying it because it matches their running outfit. <laughs> and so, um, one of the things I try to express to them is, is the importance of the foot function and how a shoe can do that. And so, how if someone's dealing with, say, overpronation, yep. what do you look at and, and some of the things and what type of shoe potentially is gonna be best for them? Yeah, so uh, tend to sit, if you're looking at it from like an overpronation standpoint, so where the foot is just super flexible, uh, it just is doing a lot of movement and on its own, we want to be looking for something with a little bit more rigidity to it, something with a lot more structure to the shoe. So normally it means that we want to find something with what they call like a medial post inside the shoe. So I have, I tend to like to cut up shoes to really kind of help show off uh, really what's kind of going on inside a shoe. 
so this is just the, this is a stability model called the Hoka Rocky. So everybody's one of the new most popular shoes out there is Hoka, and so they've really started to kind of change a little bit in how the stability model has kind of changed. So one thing that they've done is that usually on the medial side, on the inside of the shoe, usually you used to see a really harder piece of foam kind of take up this entire midfoot region. So what they've done is now is that they've taken that harder piece of foam and only helped come, kind of create a cradle. So that way they still have that nice soft foam, that nice cushion foam that everybody from Hoka really begins to enjoy, or just in general in terms of a shoe. But it has that cradle, so that way it's a little bit of a deeper cradle, so as you kind of get into that pronated stage, it helps kind of react to those forces. So that way it's not allowing too much movement, uh, and it's still kind of cradling that foot from spending too much time in that, in that pronated stage. Would you say it's giving them the stability but more comfort than previously? Yeah, so you, exactly. So what we're seeing in terms of stability game is that a lot of people never really liked stability shoes because again, it just used to be a thicker, harder piece of foam and that was, so they would build the rest of the shoe and then they'd stick in this extra harder piece of foam and it would kind of almost make it very uh, stiff and um, rigid, not very comfortable. Cumbersome was a lot, was another word that you kind of get stiff. All those kinds of things. Nowadays, we're starting to see a lot more of like a cradling effect. Okay. Still getting that cushion along the medial side, but we're kind of seeing a little bit more of a, a changing of the guard, maybe more oversoling on the on the medial side. Okay. So, because the shoe still is not correcting the issue, it's just being more of a reactionary. Absolutely. Device. And then there's a lot of people that do suffer from the overpronation of the flat feet. Um, let's take it to the other spectrum. I know there's some people that have a really high arch, or what we call a rigid foot. Um, Let's talk about what they should consider and then go into the person that has more of a neutral shoe, the yeah. foot. Exactly, so uh, the exact same issues, just really on the opposite side of the spectrum, right? So an overpronated foot, someone who has a very flexible foot has too much shock absorption going on and, and, too mu and then they're trying to stabilize too much with the inside of their foot. On the opposite side, someone with a very kind of rigid foot, someone with not a lot of movement, has a lot of trouble with shock absorption. So these are a lot of the people that tend to deal with more calf, uh, calf pain, really stiff calves, uh, Achilles issues, heel pain, because what happens is when they land, there really isn't any of that natural inward roll. So all that force is sitting in the foot. Uh, you can see, or we've seen a lot of shin splints, primarily with uh, people with very rigid feet. So it's just, it's a shock absorption game. It's it is, game. and that's what I talked to him about is that pronation, normal pronation is actually what you want because it is a shock absorber. And if you have a really rigid foot, I use the analogy of like a, a catcher in Major League Baseball. If he was catching a 90 miles per hour fastball, you'll see the ball hit his glove and he'll dampen it with his arm. And he bends that elbow to catch it, right? That's damping the forces. If he had a rigid foot, it'd be like him just keeping that arm straight and that ball hitting him like that. It's going to reverberate all the way up, cause neck pain, shoulder pain. And so it's the same thing with the foot if you have that rigid um, aspect of it. So it's something to consider for yeah. sure. No, 100%. So it's, it's almost the, it's the same kind of... Uh, Injuries and those kinds of things just on the opposite side of the spectrum. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, how about the person who's got a neutral foot, you know, somewhat somewhat normal, right? Yeah, so I mean, in reality, I could be, we see that not as often as a lot of people yeah. like to kind of admit. Yeah. Um, so, and, and a lot of that comes from the fact that we've created a very two dimensional world for ourselves. So our feet are meant to adapt to 3D, three dimensional surfaces, but we live in Florida and it's very, very flat. So what that means is that we just, a lot of people have kind of gone one way or the other. So someone who's more that neutral still want to be finding something that's just, it, the really biggest thing is what's comfortable for them, mm -hmm. right? So it might be a lighter stability shoe that has some medial support, uh, where so that way when they're getting tired and those tendons and the muscles in the feet and the ankles tend to get a little too uh, overstretched, that there's some support there, or if they tend to stay a little more on the rigid side, so something that's still very soft for them. Okay, cool. And so transitioning, so now we have that person that uh, maybe is not dealing with a diagnosis, doesn't have to deal with the doctor side of things as far as maybe a, a comprehensive orthotic or surgery or orthopedics. There's that gap between, okay, the shoe's not going to do everything for you, but you don't need the full orthotic, you don't need the full evaluation by, say, a foot and ankle specialist. Um, tell us a little bit about another option for someone and that's the insert. What, what are you seeing as far as that? Yeah, so we like to call the insert kind of our, our, uh, our secret weapon, right? It's something that you don't really see, you're not gonna see very often, but you are gonna feel it. And it is gonna kind of help in both, whether you're looking for comfort, for pain relief, or even performance, uh, can be a big factor into how the insert's gonna really work for you. So 
the shoe, yeah, so as Kevin was saying, that the shoe's not really gonna solve everything, so what we always like to do is really look at really a volume perspective, right? So whether you have uh, a Hoka with a lot of volume inside the shoe, or you have, like, let's say the Saucony Zella, for instance, a lot lower of a volume, but then we're looking at the, sh the shape of the person's foot and how high the arch is or how low their profile is, really kind of depends on now really how much movement still is there inside the shoe for that foot. And that's where the insert kind of comes into play. So we offer Super Feet, uh, which is, we believe to be the most premium insert, uh, over-the-counter insert out there. Um, and what they believe is, uh, is that same volume equation, right? So you find the shoe that's perfect for you, and then what they want you to do is to be able to find something that's gonna help fill up the rest of that volume, so that way the shoe uh, doesn't become too tight or too loose. The foot can actually move more perfectly inside the shoe. Perfect. So they proffer different volume lengths, uh, different thicknesses, profiles. That's great, you know, and obviously um, it's not, like if you have a foot dysfunction where you potentially need orthotic, that's fine. Um, the price point on some of those can be in the three, four hundred dollars. So what would you say, what's the price point on these usually? So the, a lot less. Yeah. Uh, so you're looking at something anywhere normally between 30 to $60 depending mm -hmm. on which insert you might be going with. So the durability of those is anywhere usually from six months up to a year, a little no, over a year. So you're definitely getting uh, your bang for your yeah. buck. Uh, and it can help all foot shapes and foot types, right? So we were talking about the people who tend to be overpronated, spend too much time on the medial side of their foot. It provides that nice plastic cap on the medial side to allow for that more structure underneath that foot. We like to kind of go with that three-legged table. Uh, so you have your first leg, second leg, and third leg, and then it becomes that fourth directly up underneath that foot. And then same thing on the other side for people who have very rigid feet can be a big benefit for them because again, let's say they have a really high instep. Well, their whole issue is that shock absorption this becomes almost like that button when you're dealing with a tight muscle. It acts like that button to help that foot relax inside the shoe. Absolutely. That's great. So yeah, it's definitely um, a go-to for a lot of people and solved a lot of issues. So uh, I've seen it do really just be the one missing link to solve things like plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, and almost anything. You know, it's been really helpful uh, to have that as, as a weapon there. So it's been great. Um, let's finish up. Lastly, you know, we communicate a lot, you know, because I deal with Usually, it's not all the time, I do have patients come in preventatively, but for the most part, once they've gotten to me, it's an injury. And I try to assess everything I can. I do look at the foot and ankle. I, I make some recommendations and stuff. But there's a whole other level and a whole other process that I know you do when someone comes in. What are you doing to assess to see what type of shoe they're in? Or like, you know, if there's proper biomechanics in the foot and ankle, what, what are some of the things you're doing to put that runner into the right shoe? Yeah, so we really believe in what we like to call a barefoot walk assessment. Right. So what we really do is kind of create this gigantic interview process where we're really looking for uh, information from the customer or uh, the runner, what's kind of going on, what they've been doing, what they want to do, where they want to go. Because again, we, wanted, we don't want to always be reactive. Mm -hmm. We want to be more proactive. What can we do to help kind of get someone from where they're dealing with right now to then going forward? Uh, so we see a lot more on the proactive side where people want to get active and they want to do those kinds of things. So we really want to make sure that we're putting them on that, that right foot forward, no pun intended. <laughs> so we use just a lot of questions. Uh, we sit down with the person, really work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we use a very old school branding device uh, to help measure people's feet. So a lot of people probably have seen these way back when they were kids. Still very valid today in 2017. So we do a lot of unweighted and weighted measurements. And then we do a lot of walking inside the store just to kind of see any sort of uh, discrepancies or inefficiencies or really anything from a foot perspective all the way up into the hips. So we can kind of really see how the reactionary forces work together. And then from there, we kind of come up with some options. I mean, we have tons of different shoes and footwear options, but we really help kind of narrow it down because it's really about whatever is most comfortable for the person. How they react to different cushioning, whether it's Hoka or Saucony or Brooks, New Balance, it's all going to be different for them about how they kind of move forward and what's comfortable for them. Perfect. No, I love that assessment. Um, all right, so just to wrap it up, let, let the, uh, the folks out there know how they can get a hold of you, where you're at, you're located, and all that, and then I'll kind of wrap it up. Yeah, perfect. So uh, as Kevin was saying, my name is Nick Stump. I'm the owner of Fleet Feet Sports here in Delray Beach. And so we are located on the northeast corner of Linton and Federal uh, here in the store behind the uh, Panera with the Fresh Market. Uh, we also have uh, everything on our Facebook page, uh, Fleet Feet Sports Delray Beach, along with Instagram, Fleet Feet Delray, and then everything on our website at www.fleetfeetdelray.com. 
uh, or if you want to shoot me an email, nick at fleetfeetdollary.com. I'm always open to discussing pretty much anything running, uh, fitness related, uh, and help point you in the right direction. If I don't know necessarily the answer, maybe it might, might be sending you over to Kevin himself. All right, well, perfect. So just to kind of sum it up, I see a lot of injuries with runners. There's a lot of things that cause injuries in runners, and it's, um, there, there's a lot, you know, whether you're running you know, too fast, too soon, whether you've got previous injuries, but equipment's a big one, okay? And so no matter what sport you're playing or what activity, equipment is always a factor. You have to look at footwear as part of the equipment and you don't want to go on the cheap with it. You really want to make sure you are getting the right assessment because this is a, a lifelong thing and these shoes are going to last a while and you want to make sure they are fitted for you. So take it into consideration. If you have any questions for us, feel free to message or put it in the comment section and we'll see you next week with our next episode.